Hi Aries, Rosemary from Rosemary Astrology and welcome to your May 2024 Astrology. Let's start in order because then we're going to go out of order, but let's start with Pluto stationing retrograde on the 2nd of May. Pluto has been hovering back and forth on the cusp between Capricorn and Aquarius for the past year, all part of this transit from Capricorn to Aquarius, wrapping up 16 years in Capricorn heading into 20 years in Aquarius. I did do a video all about that and I do go through the sign by sign and I think I will link it in the description. So if you have not seen that, very interesting to know what Pluto has in store for you for the next 20 years. We'll be there until 2044. But we'll retrograde all the way back into Capricorn for September, October, November, and then come back into Aquarius for good towards the end of November. So wrapping up what he is there to do in, in Capricorn in your 10th house, this is um, where you seek success. So the idea of public success, an award, an achievement, a new title at work. It is also people in authority over us. So it can be higher ups in our job. It can be something like um, you know, our social institution authorities, you know, government authorities, you know, be, be authorities, it can be parental authority, really going to be exploring the power and control um, aspects there. And I think for all of us, this is going to be quite intense because this is the last time Pluto transits through Capricorn for 248 years. So he has to really show us or really wrap up what he was there to do. And then, of course, grinding down on the first degrees of Aquarius is also showing us what he is there to do in Aquarius. This is your house of groups and organizations you belong to, your social circle, also your long-term aspirations, giving you an idea of um, where the power and control dynamics lie there as well. You know, perhaps you are too... There's an idea of conformity with the 11th house of humanitarianism, of equality, the downside is perhaps uh, too much conformity for you, a relinquishing of control. But, you know, it's going to be a long story. And this is just one small chapter or just one small scene in this long, long story. But do know Pluto is very intense during this time because, again, is sitting at the end of one sign, the beginning of another. So exerting a lot of energy to complete and to show us um, what he is here to do in his uh in the new sign he is entering, but also stationing retrograde from our vantage point on Earth seems to be coming to a stop and starting to back up. So that day of the 2nd of May is quite intense. And I wouldn't, I'd say even, you know, a little bit before and after, it's not like a switch, you know, flicking on and off, I always say. So just do know, you know, Pluto will be exerting a lot of intense energy and it's going to give you another, as I said, scene or chapter in that whole um, Pluto and Capricorn story as he moves back into there, but also Pluto in Aquarius story. Now there is a new moon on the seventh, but I am going to talk about Mars and Mercury first, then talk about everything happening here before I talk about the new moon. So Mercury stations direct on the third, no, sorry, station direct on the 25th of April was in retrograde from the 1st to the 25th, but it's completely out of shadow on the 13th of May. Retrograde in your sign, complete retrograde all took place in your sign, can be quite difficult. You probably felt it more than other retrogrades, um, sometimes not able to express ourselves clearly, uh, being tongue-tied, you know, the words just aren't coming out. I did do a whole video on Mercury retrograde. Mercury retrograde is good for some things, but also uh, there are reasons why we give the warnings we do. But now do know Mercury is completely out of shadow. So if you have, um, you know, things that are important that you have to communicate, perhaps you have to give a talk or a presentation. Maybe you are writing something. Maybe you're signing a, a contract of some sort. You know, something commercial does fall under Mercury Maybe you want to buy cell phones, laptops, ground transportation, uh, travel. This is all a great time now that Mercury is out of post-retrograde shadow. Mars, your ruler, arrived in your sign on the 30th of April. will be there all of May. You are, in a way, Aries, the fieriest of the fire signs because you are cardinal fire. So you're very self-initiating, very concerned with uh, self-identity, very dynamic. Aries tends to go do what he wants to do without really looking around to see if other people are on board. And 
good side to that, bad side to that, very, very focused, very dynamic, um, very headstrong in a way, in a way is very headstrong, but in a way, the downside of that is we don't really worry if others are on board. Now, I leave that up to you, whether you want to really worry if others are on board or not, might think it just slows you down. But Mars there at home in your sign can be also his uh, fiery with fieriest, fieriest, that's hard to say, um, Mars, god of war, uh, combative, uh, reach the goal, forging ahead, self. Forging is an interesting word because Mars also rules sharp objects. So by the same token, rules over uh, surgeons and butchers and, of course, uh, warriors as they, you know, manipulated swords and other sharp objects. But do know this is very intense energy. You are feeling very, very dynamic. The pace of your days will pick up. And the idea of pace of your days picking up is probably the fastest pace of all the signs. If we say, you know, Mars in Taurus, and I am a Taurus, uh, the pace of the days picks up for Taurus. It's not going to be the same pace. It's probably your like, you know, slower pace, but it's things are going to be fast. You're going to be um, really feeling dynamic, you know, showing up in a very dynamic way. This is remember yourself, your outer self, your physical appearance, how others see you. It's your online profile uh, as well, your individuality. So great, great energy, Aries. Definitely just remember the downside of that is being all over the place and not finishing anything. And it is also perhaps um, being too abrasive and ruffling feathers on the way by. Again, you know, I leave that up to you. Um, as I said, you know, Definitely not Venus's energy of making sure everybody is on board and everybody is okay. But, you know, maybe that is a factor for you. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it is to a certain extent. Maybe it doesn't matter at all. But just, you know, do be aware of that a little bit. And again, especially that idea of, you know, starting a lot of things but not finishing anything. But the energy can sort of get scattered all over the place. And we want to sort of focus it on reaching goals. Now, let me talk about what's going on here, the new moon. Um, we had the great big Jupiter Uranus conjunction on the 20th of April, in your case, in your house of wealth and income. I did do a video on that. Definitely sudden insight, uh, something really outside of the box, something you never thought of before, maybe with a technological component, ways to make more money, ways to save more money. It also relates to uh, our resources. You know, the second house is about food, land, farmers, but it's also banks, things like Wall Street. When we think of the Wall Street bull, you know, the statue on Wall Street, or we use the term bull markets. So something probably came up there. The energy began to really build or be very intense the 9th of April. Uh, no, the 9th of April. Yes, until the 4th of May. And it's going to die down slowly. This is a once in 14 year event. So we start with the conjunction of a 14 year cycle. It doesn't mean it's all going to happen by the 4th of May. <laughs> it means it is definitely the start of something that might have propelled you quite intensely and quite quickly into the future. And again, a technological component, expansion with Jupiter and a technological component with Uranus and something very sudden with Uranus. Venus has been there since the 29th of April and will be there until the 23rd of May at home in Taurus. Venus does relate to money and this is a money house. This is your wealth and income, as I said. So Venus can very much be her Venusian um, money self. Jupiter also relates to finance and to big business. So Despite maybe the disruptions with this conjunction, you have Venus really beneficial, you know, helping smooth things over and Jupiter there as well, bringing uh, solutions and blessings. The sun is just adding focus there until towards the end of the month, until the 20th. The new moon after um, all this activity on the 7th, the new moon at 18 degrees of Taurus on the 7th, exact at 11.22 p.m. can usher in perhaps a new way of seeing things, of doing things, you know, it can mark a turning point. It can be actually a new way of doing things, you know, uh, of making more money, saving more money, it can just be seeing things differently, you know, evaluating our resources differently, approaching things differently. The new moon, there's an idea of a resolution uh, there as well. On the 15th, the moon will be gone by then because the moon moves very fast. So I'll put in here. 
there's also Jupiter arriving there on the 15th. So, you know, Jupiter uh, communication uh, thinking, you know, very, very quick. So you might be discussing this with uh, someone. You might be thinking of your options, you know, do this, do that. How do these things compare? Might be a lot of new things coming in after this Jupiter Uranus conjunction. So, you know, Mercury is sort of having you sort through all that very, very dynamically exploring things. By the 20th, the sun is going to leave and move in to Gemini, followed by Venus on the 23rd. They're both going to conjunct Jupiter on the way by. Most intense of the aspects, the conjunction, it's as if the energies of the planets meld together. The conjunction of the Sun and Jupiter are the 16th to the 20th, Venus the 20th to the 23rd. So it's like a nice send-off for Jupiter. And you're going to think, yes, but Jupiter isn't leaving. <laughs> He's going to leave on the 25th, but it's as if, you know, the Sun just pure energy giving Jupiter a boost. And he already is the greater benefic in astrology, the biggest planet in our solar system. But, you know, showing you maybe one last time what he was here to do, to bless you with, to give you in terms of your second house. Remember, you know, Jupiter won't come back here for another 12 years. Venus, the lesser benefic in astrology. So these two together are just wonderful, wonderful benefits. The only downside is, you know, it's such wonderful energy. Sometimes it sort of passes us over because, you know, we're so optimistic and confident. We don't really um, act on what's going on. But it's just like one more, you know, I'm going to use the word uh, scene or chapter again in what Jupiter was here to do in your second house for the past year. And then on the 25th of May, drum roll, Jupiter himself shifts into your third house of communications to be there for one year. So from May 25th of this year to about May 25th of next year, almost pretty, pretty exact. And Third house is all our communications written or spoken. It includes, um, you know, languages. It includes our inner dialogue as well. So the way we talk to ourselves, it's our communication style. Also, it is siblings, cousins, other kin. It's our short trips around town. So whatever is familiar, you know, commutes to work, commutes to school, it's neighbors, it's things like day trips or uh, weekend getaways, you know, somewhere we can usually get with uh, ground transportation. Interestingly, you think ground transportation, hmm, that sounds familiar. It's because Mercury is related to the third house as the ruler of Gemini. If you have a writing project, you know, excellent to have Jupiter there for the next year. If you have been searching for your voice, so to speak, you know, Jupiter will help you in all your communications, you know, it might be even opportunities to speak if, you know, you have a um, particular knowledge you want to share. Maybe you're going to begin blogging about it online, you know, or um, on some other platform. You know, you might find a platform you want to show up on and share the knowledge you have. You know, Jupiter, again, expands everything. So, you know, your writing, your speaking will expand. Opportunities can come in, just good fortune. You know, maybe somebody is going to make you an offer to speak about something you know you have a certain knowledge about or certain ideas you want to share. Jupiter is um, related to learning and teaching. You know, wants to related to the ninth house is the ruler of Sagittarius. The idea of mind expansion and of learning things. The third house relates to grade school, high school education. So if you are in a teaching position, very very favorable to have Jupiter there. Maybe you will be called upon to teach as well, or perhaps, you know, you are going to be learning. This also relates to um, things like technical learning as well. So maybe opportunities will come through that aspect. Just very, very favorable. And we don't have to look very hard with Jupiter. He sort of tends to drop things in our lap. As these three arrive in air sign Gemini, they will all trine uh, Pluto in air sign Aquarius, trine an aspect of ease, but always, you know, not 100% super easy with Pluto. The sun will trine Pluto from the 20th to the 25th, Venus the 23rd to the 27th, and Jupiter from his arrival the 25th of May to the 7th of June. So, the sun just energizing a Pluto through this trine, you know, again, examining power dynamics with Pluto, where the power lies, what needs to be transformed, if something needs to be transformed. And you're going to be feeling very, very forceful. This could tie in with you, you know, finding your voice, so to speak, within a group or an organization, something like that. 
It could be also about you, um, you know, wanting to speak out more or change your style of communication. It could be late to an organization you belong to. It could relate to a long-term goal as well. You know, maybe you have a long-term goal of writing a book or, as I said, uh, posting online and being a sort of uh, authority on uh, a subject. Venus does the same thing with the trying to Pluto, but very much through a relationship aspect. So this could be relationships with siblings with cousins, with other kin. As I said, neighbors are included there as well. The third house also includes rumors and gossip. So you might be examining again, uh, either with the sun or with Venus. Uh, you, you know, perhaps this won't apply to all of you, but perhaps, you know, there are um, certain rumors or there is a lot of gossip swirling around you. And you are going to think, you know, what is time to take back control and sort of set the record straight. There's a and, it, you know, this, again, is completely up to you, but there's a certain value in ignoring these things and not getting caught up in them. But then there's also a certain value when it goes too far to stand up and say, hey, you know, I'm not going to put up with that anymore type of thing. Of course, Jupiter trining Pluto, it's as if Jupiter is getting off to a start in your third house with a great big bang. There's really a desire to take control, to achieve. Again, if you have a writing project, a speaking project, you have really, really big ideas, probably. There's an idea of daring, almost. And there's also an idea of wanting it also to benefit the greater good. So again, I'm getting the feeling you might be showing up and communicating um, some knowledge you have or something that you are prolific at and that you're going to start sharing with others and again, there's an idea of taking control as well, you know, and perhaps, you know, also where you give away your control in your speaking style or in your uh, uh, dialogue or even your internal dialogue, you know, maybe you're going to think, okay, instead of telling myself, you know, nothing ever works or why are people going to listen to me or I'm not really that good, I'm not an expert, you're going to have like a, a newer outlook and a more uh, take charge, take control outlook, right? I can do this. Why not? You know, I do have knowledge. I'm interesting. Why? Why wouldn't uh, people want to, you know, I'm, I'm bound to be of interest to someone, you know, I'm bound to be someone's, someone's style or someone's cup of tea type of thing. So again, I get the feeling, you know, you are going to be um, communicating or putting something out there on a more regular basis. Finally, at the end of the month, Aries, there's a full moon in your ninth house sitting across from your sun. So sun, moon opposition. This is everything, as I said, familiar to us. This is everything foreign. So long distance travel, higher education, just the house of, I say, mind expansion, because just learning about what is different. It is uh, publishing widespread communication. As I said, the media, you know, mass advertising, the web, it is organized religion, the idea of doctrines, dogma. It's also propaganda. All those, all that massive communication out there that, proposes uh, life theories or um, theories about life, you know, and our place in the world. And there's an idea of having to sort through all that, you know, and, and define for ourselves what that is, what the full moon could be highlighting that something there, maybe bringing something to closure as well. Maybe with what is showing up here in your own um, way of communicating and thinking also, because the third house is our, our thought processes and our thought patterns. You know, there might be something you are embracing here, or there might be something you are pulling away from here as well. And it's just always a question of finding balance. I often say this is the classic, you know, movie story where the person um, goes away, you know, or travels to somewhere far away or goes away to school and they're forever changed and they're not you know, everybody's like, oh, you've changed, you know, you've come back, but you're not like you were before type of thing. <laughs> but again, finding balance between sometimes, um, you know, the familiar that we're afraid of leaving, but then, you know, new ideas that can probably only uh, better things for us. You know, the more we learn, of course, um, I think the more our quality of life increases. And that was my spiel, Aries. <laughs> So lovely, Aries. That is everything I wanted to tell you for me. Thank you so much for joining me. Do drop me a comment. Let me know how the big uh, Jupiter-Uranus conjunction went for you. Let me know how this is showing up perhaps in your third house. Really interesting uh, to me to see how the astrology plays out. Have a wonderful, wonderful month, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.